generation of the right just gather round They're ready to stone her down They throw her at the feet of the teacher Dare I look up Surely they brought me here to mock me There's tangled hair everywhere as she's crying in the dust As the dust turns to mud on her face There's tangled hair everywhere she's face down in the dust and the mud And there's a hush in the congregation What is he doing? Time stands still judgment and there is the harlot and she is me face down looking through the tangled hair and the mud in my eyes the grimness I raise my gaze Only to realize I'm surrounded by beauty That would never be mine As regret like a wave Came crashing over me If I had only known Such beauty was available If I had only known But now it's too late the accuser of the brethren was pacing back and forth and back and forth and to and fro as he spat out his words. Mm. He was going back and forth and back and forth. He was listing off my sins one by one. The thing was, he was telling the truth. Guilty, 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 guilty in the grave. I couldn't lift my eyes, but all I 
What's yours is mine and what's mine is yours Who can comprehend where this is going? He said, beauty arise, arise, arise Beauty arise, arise, arise Good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. We are excited to be with you all. This is day one of five days of full fasting. So full, so full. And we are so, um, I'm, I am, I'm excited, uh, not like, yay, we're fasting, but like, I'm just excited to be emptied out to be full of God, right? Um, so this is an opportunity that we can come together and, and be with one another. So I want you all to go ahead and let me know in the comments if you can hear and hear me well this morning with the thumbs up. Good morning, Ty. Good morning, Aya. Good morning, Carl. Yes, day one. Amen. Good morning, Brando. <laughs> Good morning, Joe. Jordan. All right. And don't be lying to us now. If y'all can't, if it's low, say it's low. But if you can hear us and hear us well, <laughs> thumbs up. Amen. All right, well, we have thumbs up. You know, um, could they hear that music this morning? Amen. Um, <coughs> before the music, before Jason set up the music this morning to play, um, I literally was considering a few things, uh, uh, things that the Lord shared with me yesterday for today, and then this morning, uh, reflecting on uh, this morning's dream, and then also um, reflecting on returning to your first love, right? And I literally was hearing returning to your first love in, in, in the bathroom. And I was considering what, what that really looks like. And um, needless to say, that song that Jason um, chose this morning, that was literally one of one of a few songs of that expressed my earliest years of being saved, my first love. And it just brought me to tears, because I was like, ah, I didn't know he was gonna play that. Um, but what does returning to your first love look like? And he was stating that to the people of God, and when you hear that, that means it's possible to turn away from your first love. And so I considered it this morning, like, okay, return into our first love, return into our first love. And then I, I started to be a little sad because I started to realize that, you know, a lot of people say that, that scripture and they preach that scripture to a, a group of people. But the realization is that a lot of us haven't even gone to the first love. We have not even made him our first love. 
and it's kind of hard to return to something that you never really had. So I, I admonish and I bless you all to really make him your first love. And making him your first love, it's not that you can make him your first love. It's coming into terms that, man, he is really the one who loved me first. That there was nothing in of itself that I could do for salvation except receive what he has done for me first. That before the foundations of the world that I was chosen to be, to, to be birthed into this earth, and to be died for, that this was determined before I came to earth. So it's not a, a, a story, a, a love story of, you know, I, I chose God or I received him. No, he received me. He made me, he fashioned me, he created me for himself. And the quicker that we come into terms with that, we can really, really start on this journey. And a part of the journey, what I really want to talk about today is, I know we've been um, reflecting or speaking about a lot with meditation. We have School of Meditation coming up soon. Amen. Um, we have School of Meditation coming up soon. And I've been dealing with the mindset, the mind, the mind, the mind. And I began to ask the Lord, I said, Lord, what's the missing link? Because I felt like, you know, you, you, you preach things and, you, and you, uh, you have conversations and you, you listen to people's hearts because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, right? And I'm like, oh, Lord, the, the meditations are still not, not there yet. We haven't broke past the barrier of the, the soul yet right? And I'm so grateful for this fast because we know that fasting helps us break, break that soul so that the spirit man can come forth, right? And I'm grateful for that. But I, I was, I was like, man, we, we've been teaching. The door has been presented to the people. Um, the door of coming into higher dimensions through the man of God, and I was like, what's, what's the missing link, Lord? And the missing link is, is that many of us are not following him. And w it says that you cannot learn of me, meaning be a disciple, because to be a disciple is a learned one. To be a disciple means a follower of a teacher, not a teaching you know, and not even just following Jason in our life. You know, I, I, I love putting a premium on following the, the, the leader in front of you and following their life and not just their words. However, we are disciples of who? The Lord Jesus Christ. And he explicitly says, you cannot follow me. You cannot follow me unless so let's go and we're going to find out what the unless is let's let's go to Luke um, 9 and 23 <laughs> you know he, he, he puts he puts stipulations on on the following. You ready? No, it's okay. I have it. If any ma and if if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily. And follow me. For whoever deserves desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. For what profit is it to a man if he excuse me, gains the whole world and is himself destroyed or lost. So, and in another uh, uh, passage, it says that we are to, um, let 
Let me see. Let me just go to it. Colossians 3 and 5. Therefore put to your death, excuse me, therefore put to death your members which are on the earth. And it names a whole bunch of things that you aren't supposed to take part of. And verse 10, and put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. So we've been talking about the mind. We've been talking about your meditations. We've been talking about uh, just all these wonderful things, life in Christ, right? Life in Christ. But we can't, we can't miss the step of the crucifixion of your flesh. And how often does this happen? Daily. And I want to encourage you because I believe that it becomes to a point that your crucifixion daily is a crucifixion daily, but you can come to a point in the realm of God where you can say, like Paul, I have been crucified with Christ. That's past tense. He's not saying I'm crucifying myself daily anymore. In early, earlier teachings, he's saying, I crucify myself, I crucify my flesh, I crucify, I crucify, I crucify, crucify, I crucify daily, 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 right? And then he gets to a point where he says, I have been crucified in Christ. No longer is it I, but Christ in me. That's the place that we're supposed to be getting to. That's the realm of God that we can enter into, that we can have literally, that you can be so full of his light. We talk about power, we talk about miracles, all these things. However, it's all about him. It's all about having him. It's about coming from the outer, the outer places. I mean, salvation is nice, but there's so much more. Miracles are nice, but it's so much more. Being one with him is the goal now and forever, not in the future, not when we get to heaven. We're preparing for heaven now and forever, right? And so here in this passage of scripture, it says that you have to Put to death your members which are on earth. And this is speaking of the earthly nature. You have to put to death these things. I love how our spiritual father has uh, taught us that you're, you've literally lived your long life before coming into Christ. You lived your life and under the tutelage of your flesh of your carnal nature, of your fallen nature. You've literally lived your life for years under the tutelage, under the discipleship. Your teacher was flesh, carnality, the earthly man, the fallen man. That was your teacher for years. So now that you come into Christ, amen, we are baptized, and there is a, a, an aspect of death that happens when you're baptized and you're resurrected with Christ, with seated in heavenly places, hallelujah, all these wonderful things. But your daily life of crucifying your flesh daily, that's literally crucifying the tutelage of what happened all those years of being discipled by someone else. Now your spirit, now the spirit of God joint with your spirit is now trying to teach you. It says the Holy Spirit teaches us all things. You have a new teacher. 
you have a new teacher. It's not just Jason and I, but you have a new teacher. That is the Lord Jesus. You have a new boss. And he tells his disciples, hey, make no mistakes. You cannot be my disciple unless. You cannot be my student unless you crucify your flesh. Galatians 3, I believe 20. Let me flip there real quick. Or Jason, do you have it? Um, you can read 2 and 20. For I through the law died to the law that I might live to God. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not set aside the grace of God, for if righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died in vain. Amen. So we can get, um, I, I want, I want y'all to hear that because we can get to a place where we too can say, it is possible to say that I have been crucified, past tense. I now live in the realm of light, that I've become one with my maker. You guys, this is my desire and my goal, and I pray that this is important to your hearts even during this fast, that you become one with God. So real quick, what does, it, what does it look like to crucify your flesh? Let me go back to Colossians 3. Jesus. Of course, I find that when that's not what I'm looking for. All right, Colossians 3. Um, 5. Therefore, put to death your members which are on the earth fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Okay, pause. Let's talk about evil desire. I was having this um, conversation with a few people, and the conversation I was saying was, you have to check your heart. Your intentions matter in the spirit. Your intentions even matter on earth. Your intentions are felt by people. So um, something interesting happened in the house where my um, one of my children uh, basically was trying to get uh, someone to do something for them. And they mentioned, hey, I have this list on you of how many favors I've done and how many favors I've done for you. So you should be getting me this bowl of cereal. And... I quickly pulled that child in and I said, hey, this is not how we lead. That's an evil desire. What, ha what evil got into your heart in this moment to think that you can manipulate your intentions of when you preach, your intentions of when, you, when you're leading, your intentions when you... It's just evil desires, and that that could be anything. It all evil desires pertains to the heart of the matter. God is always looking at the heart, right? And so, with the evil desires, the problem is is that you literally, because the heart is so so fickle, you literally have to stop and say, "What are my intentions with this? What are my intentions when?" I want this to happen in my marriage. What are my intentions when I want this to happen with my children? What are my intentions when I am voicing my opinion on something? But see, let me tell you what the fix to all of that is, is a dead man. If you're dead, your intentions will be pure because you are dead. <laughs> and when you're dead, you receive life. And so in summing up, Losing your life, crucifying yourself, your fleshly desires, your 
just these these evil things and and we you know you know sin is bad oh, but really your heart guys because we can sit here and be like the the rich young ruler I I do this I do this I do this I obey the law but you know that one thing that your flesh be like mm, I ain't doing that today and it could be so small like me throwing the clothes and not hanging them up in the closet <laughs> I'm going to hang them up. You understand? Because I'm dying daily. I am dying daily. You understand? What was my heart behind that? I'm tired of putting these clothes away. (laughs) And it was an evil heart. Just do it. Just do it. We all have to do this. Why? Because we can't follow him unless... It's the unless. It's the missing link why your 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 thoughts are not still in alignment with God. Your meditations are still not right. Your speech is still not right. Your life is still not right because you have t- decided to put your cross down for a second. And I want you to know that when you put your cross down for a second, congratulations, you're in danger of your separation because the Lord is he's still moving. He kept going. He didn't stop for the young rich ruler to wait to see if he was going to come. He keeps going. You got to catch up. And thank God there's grace. There's grace. However, let's not do smite to the spirit of grace. Let's just die daily. Amen. And it's, it's simple. And then you realize when you die, you look back at your situations and you realize it wasn't that deep. I could have just, my flesh could have not rose up. I could have just not been offended. I could have not blurted out in anger. I could have just not did it. That's how it feels every time you do something wrong. I could have just not fornicated. I could have just not made that phone call. I could have not received that phone call. You know, like, but I could have just, I could have just not try to be, you know what, guys, even the proving of being right, evil desire, for me, evil desire, the proving of wanting to be right. When your brother or sister is wrong in Christ and your heart parades in and I knew I was right, or yes, yes, they are wrong. When you, when your heart celebrates that, you have an evil heart. It is wicked. It's wicked. You have an evil heart when you want to just list out people and talk about you did this, you did this, and you did this, and you did this to me wrong. Evil heart. A dead man lets it go. And he's dead and gone. And he's alive in Christ. That's why we don't have those conversations. Because then you realize, even after having that conversation, I promise you it's not worth it. Because they ain't going to understand. And everyone's going to try to justify why they did what they did. Just don't have it. Evil hearts. Evil desires. So we're going to pray this morning. And we're going to go before the Lord. And if you're at home, I encourage you, if you can, you can um, kneel or stand. Um, If you're in a place that you can't do that, then amen. Advise, you know, keep working, keep driving, (laughs) just pray unto the Lord, but let your prayer today really reflect the places that you have let your cross down. I heard, um, in closing, I heard, last closing, I heard a wonderful man of God describe um, an ar- the ark, the ark, the days of Noah, because that's what we're in, as Jason has taught us, but the ark is a resemblance of the body 
the body of Christ. And there's safety in the body of Christ. There's safety in him. But to be a part of that ark, the ark was made out of a very specific wood, but that wood had to be chopped down. And so now that's dead wood. Your death preserves you and others. And others. You dying to yourself rises above the wrath of God. And make no mistakes, he's coming back. And there's a different wrath. And if you die now, you will save your life. But if you keep this life, you can. If you keep your intentions and your desires and, and what you want and your flesh and all that stuff, right, the things that you learn and ain't worth it, you'll be so sad and like the foolish versions. And you'll realize, man, I missed out on what was supposed to be mine in my entrance way. just because of something so small. It's actually disgusting. It's like so small. It's not even that deep. Food. It ain't even that deep. <laughs> Amen? So let's pray. Lord Jesus, we have no fancy prayer today. I have no fancy prayer today. <laughs> All I have is I'm sorry. All I have is I would love to return to my first love, the one who saved my soul the one who forgave me, the one who thought of me before the foundations of the world, who considered me, who considered my life, who fashioned every pathway, who knew every decision I would make, who knew every mistake I would make, who knew everything, but you still died for me. And Lord God, I put down my cross and you begin to express where you put your cross down. I put down my cross when I wanted to prove that I was right. I put down my cross where I was prideful and arrogant. I put down my cross where I wanted to celebrate in my brothers and sisters being wrong. I put down my cross when I decided to throw the clothes in the closet. Lord, forgive me. When I began to say I, 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 and not consider the we, Father, I want to be made dead so that I will be a part of the ark that saves many, that preserves your creation. I desire this, Lord God. So would you please help us in our time of need? Because we need you to be able to die. I can't even die by myself. <laughs> I need you. I need you to help me. I need you to help us. And Lord, you are worth dying for. But I don't express that at times, and I'm so sorry. But I know deep down inside that you are worth every moment of dying for. But then my life testifies against that. And Lord, help me because I want to be a true witness, full of truth, full of light, full of joint marriage with you, which is the highest place of intimacy to be one with you which is the highest place of power 
in anything pertaining to life and godliness is to be one with you. Lord, help us that you will become our one thing. That you will become our one thing, Lord Jesus. Lord, I thank you for this time. I pray that you will give us grace to fast. No, Lord, I thank you that there's grace for this fast. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Father. And I ask you as we empty ourselves, Lord, that you will fill us with your light. That you will fill us as we empty ourselves, Lord. That you will begin to fill us. Lord, I bless you for the infilling of a new measure, a deeper measure of your spirit. That you will not cause us to burst, but you will renew us and make us afresh and new. We thank you for this, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I am broken. I am wounded. I am wretched and ashamed. And a harlot is like a chain around my neck. It's my name. She sings the song. The song of you, the song of me They drag her through the city square Dragging her by her hair She's kicking and screaming and fighting Let's take her to the teacher. 
Let's test him and see what he will say in an eruption of agreement. As they take her by her hair, they drag her through the city square. They're dragging her by her hair. She gave up the fight like a limp rag. They drag her through the city square, dragging her by her hair. She's face down. Back and forth, he was listing off my sins. 
I tried to stop him, but I, I didn't know it was too late. 
What's yours is mine and what's mine is yours Who can comprehend where this is going? He said, beauty arise, arise 